The doctor took Bill to visit a human colony in the far future, telling Nardal that he was just transporting the TARDIS back to the office. When the doctor discovered the Vardy robots had killed the setup team on the colony, the pair almost blew up the ship around which the city had been built before realizing that the colonists had already arrived and were in hibernation. The doctor stopped the bomb, and the pair deduced that the Vardis had been built to sustain happiness and had come to view grief as a plague. The doctor rebooted the Vardis, erasing their memories of the humans, before beginning diplomatic negotiations between the humans and Vardis. He then tried to return to the university just after they left, but when he and Bill exited the TARDIS, they discovered they were outside in winter with an elephant in front of them. On exploring London in 1814, the doctor and Bill attended the last frost fair on the River Thames before noticing strange lights under the ice. Bill witnessed firsthand the death of a little boy when he was sucked under the ice and was horrified and disgusted when the doctor seemed to care more about retrieving his sonic screwdriver than the boy who had been stolen. Bill challenged the doctor demanding to know whether he had ever killed anyone to which he confirmed saying that he did not have the luxury for outrage as he was 2,000 years old. Bill befriended the urchins who had originally stolen from them and chose to cooperate with the doctor. Their investigation led them to Lord Sutcliffe with the doctor warning Bill to let him do the talking as it required a diplomatic approach. After Sutcliffe made racist remarks towards Bill, however, the doctor punched him in the face. Later Bill agreed with the doctor to set the creature in the Thames free, surprised when it wasn't headline news in the present day. The doctor took Bill to Titan to see a clear image of Saturn, her favorite planet. He then introduced her to the concept of swimming in the gravity-deprived atmosphere, although this was cut short when the area around them was heavily disturbed by a passing landship. When the pair were rescued by the passing vehicle, Bill was introduced to Rudy Zoom, the financier of the voyage. The two soon met Lady Takashi, a psychic who felt an alien presence on Titan years ago in a sleep. The ship changed its buoyancy to float on the Methane River. After several hours, they found a domed-off garden in a cavern, which they investigated on foot. The doctor noticed that all of the vegetation inside was sentient, except for two trees in the center. The group was scattered when a robot attacked them, believing them to be weeds. As Bill hid in the garden, she was attacked by one of the Halu'u plants and passed out. Bill found herself in the dream space where Scythor, who was the giant Halu'u below the two trees, chased Bill and Rudy in an attempt to wipe their minds as part of his plan to take over Earth. They escaped and projected themselves into the real world until they woke up. Scythor's lover Oksana ordered Bill and Rudy to be released. As they ran for the doors, Oksana sacrificed her life to destroy Scythor and the domed garden. After making it to the ship, Bill saw the last piece of Scythor warn the doctor before dying that, the unknown soldier, is stirring. The doctor and Bill landed in the Indian Territory in 1880, where the outlaw Seth Shelton tried to hold Bill hostage. She was saved by United States Deputy Marshal Base Reeves and the scout Joey Two Trees, who had Shelton arrested and intended to take him back to Arkansas to stand trial. While Reeves, Joey and the doctor took off, Seth's brother Frank Shelton arrived at Reeves' wagon and freed Seth. Seth and Frank waited for the doctor and his friends to return so they could kill them. The Seminole medicine woman Totika summoned the Stikini who killed the Sheltons by ripping their hearts from their bodies. The Stikini threatened the life of Zeke Tolbert, but Bill promised to tell Totika the truth about Bill's travels to other worlds. Totika then put Bill to the test to swap her body with Stikini war queen Kocheta in the Red Skies, a region of the dream space the Stikini were native to. The doctor and Reeves freed Bill during the ceremony, but the ceremony succeeded. In the Red Skies, Bill met the other Seminole Totika had banished. The doctor contacted Bill, telling her where she was. Bill and the Seminole willed themselves out of the red skies, forcing the Stikini back there. Reeves and Joey destroyed the totem used in Totika's ceremonies. Afterwards, the sky opened up, and the group saw the Stikini get burnt by an unknown force in the red skies. Returning to the TARDIS, the Doctor and Bill saw the TARDIS had impossible carvings on its exterior, and the Doctor demanded answers. Searching for answers about the carving on the TARDIS, the doctor came to the Renneth Archive Library on Cornucopia to try to identify it. Angered by the head librarian Matildas Galathea's snyness, Bill went outside to the Kabbalist quarter for some fresh air. 
Noticing Bill was the first to come in or out of the library in months, the Kabbalist kids captured Bill and told her that Matildas used to let them hang around before she behaved strangely and barred the kids. Bill showed them a photo of Matildas being grumpy, which revealed something strange around her head. Returning to the library with the Kabbalist kids, Bill told the doctor, Matildas and Sashana to stop whatever it was they were doing. Bill took a photograph on her phone which revealed Sashana's true form. Sashana revealed that she was psychically sowing doubt in Matilda's mind and blocking her memories so Sashana could sell off the library's collection after being handed custody of it. She began to fry the group's brains with her mind, but was stopped after Bill summoned the Ristolian crater hound Archie, whose simple brain couldn't be kept back. After Sashana was arrested, the doctor realized the carving wasn't a symbol, but a coded message. The doctor and Bill's next destination to break the code was to see Alan Turing. The doctor and Bill went to visit the Galadian duplicate of Alan Turing on the lunar colony Athenia to decipher the markings on the TARDIS. However, Alan had vanished two years previously. The Galadian Chiyoko, feeling her mother, the TARDIS's essence on Bill, had Bill take Chiyoko to the TARDIS, which Chiyoko could hear was screaming due to the markings on the TARDIS, shell. After reuniting with the doctor, Chiyoko told him where to find Alan. They found Alan inside a replica of King's College, Cambridge on the moon's surface. The arrival of the TARDIS caused the code, which was part of the dreamspace dwelling Phantom Piper, to make the Piper manifest through Alan using block transfer computation. When the Phantom Piper used Chiyoko's mind to create soldiers from every war to start a war between humans and Galadians. Bill told Maggie Cortez not to kill Chiyoko, and told Maggie to trust the doctor. With the help of a suggestion from the doctor, Alan defeated the Piper by breaking down his code, allowing Chiyoko to live. Shortly afterwards, the doctor and Bill ended up stranded in an entropy bubble in space, as part of an elaborate trap by Faye Truscott Sade to capture time travelers, including the doctor. During an attack by the Clockwise Men, Bill helped Gol Klutha attack them with a proton cannon, but was powerless to stop them aging Gol to death. Escaping, the Doctor and Bill landed back on Cornucopia, where Bill shouted at him for not telling her enough about what was going on. After apologizing and meeting Annabelle Lake, Bill narrowly avoided being shot at by Faye during their flight to Wonderland HQ, leaving her shaken for being targeted instead of the Doctor. After the Doctor explained to Bill his past with Faye during the Time War, they met with Matildas, where Bill watched over the Doctor as he fell asleep to meet Faye in the dream space. Later, when it was discovered that Faye's only surviving relative, Alexander Truscott, was probably behind things, Bill recognized him from his appearances on TV. After she and the doctor got captured in an attempt to storm Truscott's house, they eventually escaped, where Bill first noticed the globes from London's CCTV cameras floating and forming around Faye, preparing to attack. The globes reconstituted as shade around Faye, and Bill joined the doctor's group in entering the dream space inside. After Faye attacked the doctor, Bill finally got her to listen by explaining how the doctor always tries to do what is right, allowing the doctor to reveal the truth to her, that the absence was never real. After the revived Shade wiped Faye's memory of her time with him at the cost of his own life, Bill joined the doctor in placing her safely in Wonderland in London, although she was upset that the doctor never said goodbye to her, and visited Colo Zarnista Mining Facility 27 above Saturn. Bill and five other university students were looking for accommodation when the landlord invited them to stay in 11 Cardinal Road. The doctor also investigated and discovered the landlord was feeding students to the dryads, insects who were working with the landlord to keep his mother Eliza alive. Bill led her own investigation and discovered the secret of the house. After the landlord was defeated, the house disintegrated. She later moved back in with her foster mother. While traveling, the TARDIS was drawn to the 9th century, in the northern reaches of the Atlantic Ocean. Allying with a group of Vikings, the Doctor and Bill discovered a group of ice warriors attempting to contain the flood. Though the Doctor initially attempted to parlay with the flood, he soon realized that they were caught in a time loop relating to his adversary Fenric. Having Bill evacuate the ice warriors, the Doctor detonated a volcano to destroy the flood strain, before evacuating everyone. Bill later bore witness to the Doctor bringing peace to a planet populated by clones of his old friend Plex. He later told her the true story of how the clone society came to be. When preparing for a date, 
Bill had her identity stolen by an Ocho named Ziggy, the doctor dismissing her when she tried to get his help. Recruiting Lou, Bill managed to convince the doctor of both her identity and to help Ziggy return home. When a temporal crisis rendered TARDIS travel all but impossible, the twelfth doctor became stranded on Gallifrey with Bill Potts. There, he acquired a stash of Kaifer gems and came up with the idea of using them to stabilize the temporal energy by throwing them into the untempered schism, like skipping stones. Bill accompanied the doctor to the schism, but had to wear a protective shield to avoid the sight of the schism, melting her brain. They then split up with Bill returning to the Panopticon, where she was confronted with Nardal, much to her surprise, as she hadn't previously realized that he'd hitched a ride on this particular TARDIS trip. Game. Lost in time.